I've made videos on Calipag and Toon Squid and Procreate Dreams before, but I've never taken a step back and looked at all of them at once in one video and thought about which one do I like the most. So I have a project today. It's a little snippet of animation that I'm going to be using on my other channel, which is an animation channel where I teach people how to draw. The video I'm working on now is about Blender and how I finally learned after several missteps how to use the program. So if you've never seen the channel before, the animation style is a little bit of mix of everything. There's some tweening animation, there's some chonky animation, uh, there's some frame by frame animation. And what we're gonna be working on today is kind of a mix of those things. Usually I build all these videos in Adobe Animate on the desktop. And so I'm going to be taking some of that workflow and seeing what pieces of that workflow work here on the iPad in these various programs. Here's the audio clip that I'm gonna be working with today. Beaten all the bosses yet but I've gotten a lot better at dodging. The metaphor I'm working with here is that I'm involved in this boss fight. The boss is, is Blender and it keeps beating me up. This giant fist comes out of the sky and pummels me throughout the video. But here I managed to take a step to the side and avoid that fist. So in that animation, my character is going to be standing in one place, and as the fist comes down, he has to kind of sidestep away. When I started taking online art courses, I quickly found myself way in over my head. It was like jumping from elementary school straight into college. I needed something that was in between that. My Learn to Draw in 60 Days course is that middle step that goes over the basics of drawing, so you can jump into more advanced tutorials and courses with confidence. To learn more about that course and my other ones, go to bradsartschool.com. So the first animation app that I was looking at here was Calipay. And it's a really nice animation app. I, I have it open right here and they're all kind of laid out in a similar way with our tools along the left hand side. And then we have this timeline along the bottom and the timeline has frames. The timeline has layers so we can add our different pieces of animation on different in different places. So for example, the fist is on one layer, the character that's moving about is on another layer. Eventually I'm going to add a background on a third layer. And what's really nice here is I can take my finger and I can scrub back and forth and I can see my animation so I can kind of get a feel for, oh, how does that look when that fist is coming down? I can also set an in and out point on that. So if I just want to watch one part, like maybe I'm looking at that place where he's moving over and I want to see, should I start his move over a frame or two earlier or a frame or two after I could just kind of zone in on that one place and play it over again in real time and get a feel for how it looks. Calipeg also has its own drawing tools, but they're pretty limited. For example, we have brushes. So if you open those up, we have a pretty short brush list, but there's also lines, there's shapes, there's things like that that we can play with. There's a selection tool, there's an eraser. It's fairly basic, but for frame by frame animation, it's great. Another thing that it lets me do, as you can see here on some of these, let me double tap on that, it's holding that frame for multiple frames. So I can actually come in here from the side and make that shorter or make that longer as I need it to be. It's pretty handy. And it's not that different than another app on this list, which is Toon Squid. Let's take a look at that next. So here's what my sketch animation looked like in Toon Squid. By default, it hides the timeline and in general, all of the interface elements here are kind of bigger and they're easier to hit. I found with Calipeg, you really need to be using the Apple Pencil to kind of hit some of these things. This you could use your finger to navigate around a little bit easier. Another thing you're going to notice is all these apps have onion skinning, so you can see what frame happens next, what frame is happening beforehand. And what's nice with both Calipeg and with Toon Squid is you can go in and you can actually toggle off the onion skidding on a layer by layer basis. So if you're working on one layer and you don't want to see the onion skin of some of the other layers, you can just toggle those off. There are extra things going on here. There's this like little dot menu so I can actually change the position, the rotation, the scale, the opacity of various elements that I contain on these layers. Another really nice thing about this, which I'll talk about more in a minute, is this idea of a library, which is anything that I import into this app is kind of saved as a symbol that I can use over and over again, which is really nice and similar to something you might find in Adobe Animate on the desktop. Also, these layers on my timeline have their own layers in them. So if I'm using this as a drawing program, it has layers within the layers, if that makes sense. It gets a little complicated, but once you get drawing it, it makes total sense. It also has other features. For example, this little bag that can toggle snapping on and off. So if you're moving something around, it's going to snap to the top of the frame or snap to another object, which also can be kind of nice, especially if you're moving things left to right and that sort of thing. Out of the three apps, this is probably my favorite implementation of the timeline. On Calipeg, I had to take my pencil and I'd scrub to the right 
and it would move the timeline to the right or to the left. Here I could just put a finger down and I could move my timeline back and forth and I could see it really easily. I could take two fingers and I could squeeze that in if I wanted to like zoom out on the timeline. And generally this sort of thing worked well. I really liked the interface here in ToonSquid. Now the newest app on this list is Procreate Dreams. It came out not last year, it's actually the year before. It was the fall of 2023. And this is an interesting app because there's a lot of new, interesting experimental features but they're not features I've figured out how to work into my workflow yet because they're not even things that exist over on the desktop in Adobe Animate. But I could take this little icon here and I could scrub back and forth and I could see how this looks. Also, this one I accidentally uh, animated at 24 frames per second instead of 12 frames per second. So when I go back and forth, it looks a heck of a lot smoother, which is kind of cool. But here again, we can see like I have my one frame where my character's over here and then I have my spear frame and then I have my next frame. Another thing that Procreate Dreams does that maybe is a good thing, maybe isn't, it holds the audio so when, you're, when your finger is just sitting there, it's, it could be a little annoying if you're just trying to look. But I suppose if you're doing lip syncing or something like that, being able to know what exact sound is playing on that frame could be really helpful. Now how the timeline works on this is a little interesting because it zooms in on the X and the Y axis, where the others you can make it just scooch in on the Y axis. This one actually can get taller or narrower. And sometimes I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, there we go, that's a little wider. Uh, Cause I'll want it to make it wider, but I don't want to make it narrower. I don't want, I want it to stay the same height and I don't know how to do that. There are some features here that are missing that I think will make this app a lot better in the future that they're working on for like a 1.1 update sometime this year. Like I was moving my heads around quite a bit. Like right now, it doesn't have a selection tool. It's hard to move things around. They're also working on more brush options, adjustment layers, stuff like that that's really gonna make this app a lot better to use and kind of bring it in line with some of the drawing tools that are available in Procreate. Once they get those in there, this could be a really killer app. So let's take a look at these movies. These are the three clips that I came up with using these three apps. Eating all the bosses yet, but I've gotten a lot better at dodging. Eating all the bosses yet, but I've gotten a lot better at dodging. Eating all the bosses yet, but I've gotten a lot better at dodging. One thing I really do love about Procreate Dreams is I can move into one area. Like say I just want to take a look at that fist coming down. When I zoom in on just this part of the timeline and I hit play, it's just going to loop that part of the timeline over and over again so I can see how just that part of the movie is playing. I could do something similar in the other two apps, but it's a little bit more manual and you have to kind of clip the ins and the outs in order to do that. All right, so our sketches are in place. Let's take a look at how those turned out in each app. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is I want to import my finished artwork and bring it into these apps and take a look at what that process looks like. Now, for this process, I'm going to eliminate Procreate Dreams. Hate to eliminate them so early, uh, but without a selection tool, moving things around and resizing things while possible, is really kind of clunky and it's really not fun and it got kind of frustrating. So that one did not make the cut. However, with the others, um, I found that I was able to replicate a lot of the things that I'm doing in Adobe Animate right here on the iPad pretty well. First up is Calipeg and Calipeg made it really easy to just import images from my photos app on my iPad. And every time you do that, it does make a new layer for it, which wasn't the end of the world because it's really easy to take your Apple Pencil and grab that frame in Calipeg and move it to another layer if you want to or if you need to. Also, when you import, it gives you the option to resize it. Like this file size was pretty big, bigger than I needed because I'm working in 4K and this file size here on the iPad is actually uh, full HD. I also imported the head on its own layer and I'm kind of moving it around as Brad talks, as I talk and I hit different words. I kind of have my character move around and, and jerk around a little bit. So here I was splitting frames and moving the head a little bit, splitting frames, moving the head again, splitting frames, moving the head a bit. And in general, it worked pretty well for that. Now, one of the reasons I designed the character the way I designed it is the body is kind of flat and easy to read draw over and over again in Adobe Animate. So I don't necessarily have to redraw the head a lot. I just have a lot of different symbols for different eye movements and things like that. 
but the body I could redraw and animate in different ways, and the limbs are just black lines. It's really easy to replicate. For the sake of this, I just made it simpler. I didn't even bother with the arms. I just kept the body in there. And here I was going and I was cutting the frames. I was moving the body around to kind of match where the head was going and to add some different emphasis. And it didn't take me long to put this together. This is the finished product. Beaten all the bosses yet but I've gotten a lot better at dodging. Okay, so let's take a look at Toon Squid and what they're doing next. So this is the final file that I came up with with Toon Squid, and I have my background here, and all of these things are contained here in the library. Now, one of the things that I absolutely love about how the library works is this, if you draw something on one of these canvases and then move part of it, like say the body off the canvas, and then in the next frame you move it back up, the parts that were off the canvas you've lost you've lost that pixel data but if you've made that a symbol like this tree background that i have here i can move that around another thing that i have is if i hit this little dot icon here you're going to see i can change the position rotation scale that sort of thing so if i wanted to i could do some neat parallax effects by changing the position uh, or rotating things changing elements basically in the background or I could have a character walk in. It just really opens up the realm of possibilities in a way that uh, you can't really do in Calipeg that maybe you could do in Procreate Dreams depending on what you're doing. But I loved that about Toon Squid. I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna look at my smear panel just because this is my favorite part. I love drawing panels where I get to spread out the object that I'm drawing and make it look really goofy. I'm gonna go to my fist layer and I could just tap on this and disable my onion skin. That way we can kind of see this better and now when I'm scrolling back and forth, you can see the character move out of the way as that fist is coming in, which is pretty much, you know, the effect that I'm looking for. So with all of this set up, let's take a look at how this turned out fully finished over on Toon Squid. Beaten all the bosses yet, but I've gotten a lot better at dodging. Now, one thing I couldn't figure out how to do in Toon Squid that I was doing on Calipeg is that when I take a frame like his head, I can resize his head but I couldn't figure out how to turn it off so I could squish it. What I wanted to do as that head snaps back, like right here in this frame, after the smear frame, it bounces over here. What I wanted to do is I wanted to ugh, push that head in so it like snapped back and was narrower and then had to stretch back into position. I'm gonna jump back over to Calipeg and show you what I'm talking about. See how his head is a little narrower there, then it gets wider, then it gets wider, and now it's back to kind of its normal width after a few frames. So he spreads over thinner, wider, wider. It's a subtle thing, but I think it adds to the bounciness of him moving back. I kept looking for a way to do that easily with a symbol in Toon Squid, but I wasn't able to find it. Doesn't mean it's not there, it just means it's not easy to find. So let's take a look at the finished movie in Toon Squid, see how it turned out. All right, so after using all three of these apps, which one did I prefer? I think I'm gonna go with Toon Squid. I think that was my favorite. I really liked using Calipeg. That surprised me. It seemed like the most basic of the three, like the least bells and whistles and stuff like that. But when I actually got into the flow and using that, I thought it was a lot of fun. Also, Calipeg is going to be coming to Android. There's a beta right now, but like importing audio and things like that aren't quite working yet. Um, so as that gets finished, I'll definitely be taking a look at that on Android. That's gonna be a great Android animation app. But what really won it for me is I just love the timeline in Toon Squid and how easy it is to just take your finger and move around. I love the library in Toon Squid and how I could store all my assets in there. Um, as your files get bigger or as your timeline gets bigger, it can be harder to manage. And that's something that in Procreate Dreams I ran into a lot. In fact, I've, I've kind of talked about it. That's the one thing that's kind of really stalled me out on Procreate Dreams was I just don't like managing the timeline, especially as it gets longer. The easiest timeline to manage out of all three is definitely this one here in Toon Squid. It's just very easy to move back and forth. It's very easy to just come in here and pinch it out, zoom it in. Calipeg isn't hard, uh, but Toon Squid just does some of those little things better. So that's my final rating. Number one is Toon Squid. Number two, I'm gonna give to Calipeg. And number three, I'm gonna give to Procreate Dreams. I think Procreate Dreams could potentially take the top spot, but they need to keep working on features, working on some of that functionality before they could really jump up there. Anyway, that's my list. Thank you all for watching. Talk to you guys in a couple of days.